And our meteorologist Evelyn Taft has been monitoring the weather pattern and mm -hmm. what that's doing to the spill, Evelyn. Yeah, absolutely. You, Susie and Juan, let me take you to satellite radar right now. We are talking an impending storm. So why does that affect the oil spill? That is the big question tonight. At this point, again, Michelle was saying that the ribbons of oil are moving to the south. Let me tell you, once the storm comes in, and again, it's not going to be as big of a storm visually as what we saw on Monday, but it's going to be windier. It's a wind driven storm. We're going to be looking at wind waves over the coming days, and then that could move the oil a little closer to shore. So, of course, that is a big concern for us this evening. As we get a look right here, you will see the storm inching closer to us. Of course, we are concerned about the oil offshore right now, and we're sort of trying to get a good gauge of where it will be headed as the wind comes in. At first, we're going to start off with southwesterly winds between 10 and 15 knots. The winds are going to intensify a little bit as we head into Friday. So it's going to be Thursday and Friday where the storm comes in Thursday night through Friday. Now by Friday, it gets a little windier and by Friday night, that's when the winds are set to peak. We could see winds up to 25 miles per hour out of the southwest or actually knots rather because we're talking about nautical miles uh, on the ocean. And then we are expecting to see again by Friday night, 25 mile knot winds. And with that, we could get some movement oil wise. So of course we're continuing to track this for you. We're continuing to forecast this for you. But of course at this moment we are looking at a wind driven storm much windier than what we saw earlier this week. So even though we may not be expecting rain and lightning, we are expecting wind and wind waves. So of course that could affect vessels on the water that could also affect the oil.